Could these machines be the future of the healthcare workforce? A mechanical army of nurses and carers developed right here in Scotland. We're bound by our imagination, essentially. I think we're on a bit of a precipice in terms of mass adoption of robotics. But are we really ready for robots to take care of us instead of humans? We have to think, what is a robot? This is the Lara Lab at the National Robotarium, a £22 million centre for AI and robotics. It looks and feels like a normal flat, but it's actually a testbed for robotic technology. One of the lab's main residents is the ARI robot. Great game. I enjoyed playing with you, and I hope you had fun too. It's designed to help prevent cognitive decline in older adults. And a major study is currently underway to see if the robots can actually pull that off. Putting Ari to the test is 69-year-old Bob. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Nice How are you doing, Bob? Nice to see, nice good, to see you, yeah, too. Yeah, long time. Long time no see. I know. Yeah. So what have you and Ari been up to today? Well, we've been playing this card matching game. It's a game I used to play with my children when I was younger, where you turn over cards and you've got to get them to match. But I beat Ari both times, so <laughs> I'm smarter than your average robot. Yeah, absolutely. You must be pretty good at this game. So what made you want to get involved in this trial in the first place? I was invited um, because they were looking for people that were over 60 to get involved with testing the software. And I just put my name forward and they said, yeah. Given your experience then with Ari over the last 18 months, do you think we could see more robots like this maybe in hospitals or care homes in the future? Yeah, not only in the future. I think robotics are being used now more and more in healthcare and assisted learning environments. Um, and that's just going to increase, especially with the pace of technology change. We're, inter we're interacting more and more with technology and um, I can only see it being beneficial really for humankind. It's good to know you can beat it at a game as well. <laughs> Sometimes. It's beaten me as many times as I've beaten it. Keeps I you on think. your toes. Yeah, yeah, it does, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Emily Ann Nolts has been leading the ARI project. The great thing about these kinds of robots is they provide social engagement. So you could see something like ARI in a care home, for instance, or a respite home moving around to different people's rooms or even just being in the common area and engaging people in different types of games and activities to keep their minds active um, and that that will hopefully help delay aging. How have people responded to ARI then? People really like the size of it and being able to stand and talk to it and make eye contact with it and interact with the tablet. We know that older people can sometimes suffer from loneliness. You know, having one of these in your care home or in a, even a hospital ward, how much do you think that would help? Oh, absolutely. I got comments about, oh, it feels like there's someone there with you. I mean, even if you're not having a full-on social conversation, but you're playing a game with it, or even if it's just there while you're playing the game, that social presence does have an impact. Who is your appointment with? It's been Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith is in room 17. The ARI robot has most recently been used in a hospital in Paris in a receptionist-like role, answering patient queries and helping staff with routine tasks thereby relieving pressure on doctors and nurses. There's no plans to roll out the robots in Scottish hospitals just yet, but there is a perfect storm brewing when it comes to how we care for our rapidly growing older generation. There's currently around 6,000 nursing and midwifery vacancies in Scotland, and about one in three British babies born in 2016 are expected to make it to their 100th birthday which would mean almost a quarter of a million from that year alone. Robots are already helping people with complex needs to live independently. Here at Blackwood Home in Glasgow, residents can get emergency help with just a touch of a button, either through a device worn around their neck or on their wrist, or on a tablet like this one. But it won't be a human coming to help. It'll be a state-of-the-art robot. So let's give it a go. The request has been sent. This is Kylie, an assistive robot that's programmed to know the layout of each block of flats, meaning if a resident here is in trouble, it knows exactly where to go. Beginning call to 24-7 now. Hi there. 
So I'm connected almost immediately to a 24 seven support worker. Obviously, I'm not in an emergency situation right now, but what would happen if I was? So if it was an emergency situation, we would call out to you, see if we could get a response from you. Um, if we couldn't do that or if we couldn't hear anything or see anything, um, we could manoeuvre the robot to where you are in, in your house um, and see if we could get a response that way or assess any injury if there's an injury. Um, and sometimes people are just really reassured to actually see our faces on the robot and it's been enough for them to help themselves up if they've had a fall or anything. Um, but if it was a real emergency, we would try and contact staff, family members or the emergency services. So you're a first responder in a way to any kind of more serious incident? Yeah. Kind of, in a, in a remote way, yeah. Raymond Chalmers is a support worker at Blackwood and is still getting used to Kylie. But he hopes having it around will allow him to spend more time caring for residents. I think it's given her peace of mind to know that that is there. So the pressure alarm, that they're not going to have to wait so long for somebody to come. And like if somebody maybe it's during the night, a uh, night shift can't manage to get to them. So obviously the robot's there to step in and then take that place and, and come in just to make sure that they're all right and that they're not in any danger. How do you think it will impact your job? Will it help you or will it hinder you? No, I think it will help us in a big way, you know, and I think it will make our jobs a wee bit easier because if like, one of the customers maybe drops the remote control, um, it will make it a whole lot easier, you know, they can sort of distinguish what's, what's very urgent and what's not. Um, and I think it's really good for that, you know, so, and it'll give, free up us to, you know, concentrate on other things that we need to do and it'll prioritise things a wee bit better for us as well. Um, come towards me. Scott was one of the researchers who helped develop Kylie for Blackwood. We went and did a co-design session with Blackwood staff and Blackwood customers, and all of the applications that we're seeking to develop as part of the robotics work came out of that. So it was what the people were saying to us that we then took to do with the development. Are there any drawbacks of this technology? Obviously, there's a cost that comes with the installation of all of this sort of stuff. Um, we're kind of mitigating that with Blackwood's um, already existing, very innovative work on making things accessible to people in wheelchairs or with mobility issues. And that's where we kind of got a lot of the adaptations with the doors and the elevators set up. But if you were going to be adapting this to other places, then that would be an additional barrier. Only time will tell if Kylie is a success here. But back at the National Robotarium, tens of millions of pounds is being spent on developing a range of assistive robots. So Lisa, this is where the magic happens. <laughs> this is where the robots are developed. How many projects have you got going on at the moment? I think there's about 12 live projects at the moment, but probably more across the universities. Uh, but they're over a range of different sectors. So um, offshore energy mm -hmm. is a huge area for us. Agritech mm -hmm. is definitely something that we're interested in. And we have a life sciences uh, project live at the moment too. So there's a lot going on here, but is there a lot of catching up to do for the UK in terms of robotics? Yeah, I would say so. And I think that's why the National Robotarium has been invested in to bring the UK back up to that global curve. Spot can explore and assess dangerous and hazardous environments so that humans can see what's happening in the area without actually having to be there. It uses microphones and cameras to relay sounds and videos and can cover a lot of ground quickly. What's your name? You can call me Pepper. Pepper is another social robot designed to engage with humans and help with loneliness. Oh, I like it when you touch my head. The bot's earlier versions of Pepper used in care homes were discontinued due to a lack of demand. Staff said Pepper was more of a hindrance than a help and created more work for them when it malfunctioned. If we try to develop a solution that's not going to be adopted, that's not going to work. So we need to understand, um, and really the terminology we use is co-produce and co-create, and that is really working together to ensure that the solutions that we do come up with are going to be used in practice. There's a misconception, perhaps, that these robots could take jobs away from humans. Is that the case? People talk about that quite often, but the evidence shows that we're, we're, there's a real shortage of healthcare professionals. And we don't want to, we're not talking about taking jobs away, but we are talking about alleviating tasks, especially dull, dirty and dangerous tasks. But could we see them, you know, taking bloods, holding someone's hand, doing complex medical tasks? Potentially. I mean, we have, um, you know, robotic surgery is, is already a thing. We have projects here that are helping to train up the next generation of surgeons on uh, robotic surgery tools. 
There's definitely a balance to be struck in terms of, yes, some things are a little bit more futuristic, but there's some very exciting things happening at the moment and we can expect to see them implemented in the next two to five years. Remember not to take your medication on an empty stomach. As Scotland enters a new and potentially robotic era in healthcare, the question remains, can mankind and machines truly coexist?